All right, guys. This is our last Algebra 1 SOL review video. And you know what's funny? As soon as I started this, the cat decided to get into the litter box. And so all I can hear is the scratching of the litter box. Sorry about that. So these are the practice items um, from the state guide that are not yet covered, that we haven't done yet, and some of the questions from a practice SOL, some from when we took in one class and some from when we took in the other class. So this is kind of a kind of a mishmash and then just some last minute reminders at the end. So algebra kitties say mu. Let's get started. Okay. Which represents this expression in simplest form? Single blockers, you can skip right past this one. We did this one in warm-up. Or pause it, try it again, make sure you got the correct answer. So we need to remember here that we, when we use our rules, our laws of exponents, this is power of a power. Power of a power is multiply. So we've got 15 times x to the negative 6. We multiply those exponents over 3 times x to the positive 12. 15 over 3, that's 15 divided by 3, so there's going to be a 5 in my answer. It's not A or B. x to the negative 6 minus 12 is negative 18. X, so 5x to the negative 18, which is 5 over x to the positive 18, when we um, rewrite it with a positive exponent. All right. A couple kids figured out in class that if they put this expression into the calculator, as long as you store a value for x, um, so you say that you put in 2 store x, um, it will work. If you then want to type this into your calculator, and then you can type your individual choices. Um, that's quite tedious, and that's only going to be for my folks that are super comfortable with the calculator. Um, so if you're not, then don't worry about it. You're going to have to do it out on paper. A, bank, a baker recorded the number of batches of cookies he made on each of seven days. He baked a different number of batches of cookies each day. This box and whisker plot summarizes his data. The baker baked 20 batches of cookies on the eighth day. So now we're taking the value, the number 20, and we're putting it into this data set. Now we don't know the rest of the data set. We just know what's in the box and whisker plot. He redraws the box and whisker plot to include his data. Which statement comparing the new box and whisker plot to the original box and whisker plot is not true? Okay, so, so seven days worth of information. So there was definitely one day where he made eight. It was either that or there are two days where he made eight, and they were the two middle ones. Um, if it's seven, then there should be one at 12. There should be one at 15. should be one at six and one at five. All right, so if we add in the number 20, they want to know several things. Did the median increase? Did the lower extreme increase? Did the upper extreme increase? Did the value of the interquartile range increase? Well, the first one that strikes me is lower extreme. All we did was add in the number 20, which would go all the way, way up here. So it would definitely increase the upper extreme. So we know that's not it. Um, but that has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that the lowest number here was 5. So I, I'm not even really going to entertain the other two. It's got to be B, because the lower extreme is the lowest number, which is 5, and it had absolutely no effect on it. So sometimes it is the easier explanation that prevails in a question. There's an attack kitten stalking me, so I apologize in advance if there's any crazy editing jumps. I may have to pause it if I get attacked by the attack kitten. Okay. What are the solutions to this equation? 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 equals 0. I got lots of choices here. I could graph it. And if I'm using a graphing calculator, that might be my best bet because you can then look at the sign of the, um, the numbers, look at the location of them on the x-axis. And so when we say graph, we're going to graph and then we look at the x-intercepts. Zeros, solutions, roots, x intercepts or we can try to factor it and in this case the um, AC is equal to 6 and that means there are indeed factors of B that add up to excuse me factors of AC that add up to B that would be 2 and 3 so I could factor it and then use the zero product property so that's a second choice I could use the quadratic formula that would be another choice, so opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, so I could plug all those numbers in. Or 
I could plug um, and uh, chug, which would be taking my solutions that they give me, A, B, C, and D, all eight of these numbers, and plugging them in to see which one works. Probably for me, the most efficient is going to be factoring, because I'm pretty comfortable with factoring. So I know that it's got to be 2x times x to give me 2x squared. And then I know it's probably plus 1 and plus 3. So I'm going to get a plus 3 here and a plus 1 here. That gives me 3 when you multiply, 3x when you multiply here, 2x when you multiply there, giving you 5. And that, that's it. So my solutions are 2x plus 3 equals 0, solve. So 2x equals negative 3 when I subtract 3 from each side, and x equals negative 3 halves. And then x plus 1 equals 0, Let's subtract 1, and x equals negative 1. So negative 1 and negative 1.5, because that's the most efficient way for me. What would be the most efficient way for you? You just have to ask yourself that question based on what's here. Notice I did have to know what to do, so I did have to recognize how to solve a quadratic equation. Okay, so now we're reaching questions we probably also went over in class, but I know we need the actual reinforcement here. Look at the graph of the function, uh, look at the graphed function shown. In this function, you have zeros. The zeros are the x-intercepts. And those zeros on this function happen to be 1 and 3. So what they're wanting us to find is the function down here in um, algebraic form that has the same two zeros. Well, what we noticed in one class is that, well, those are both positive numbers. Now, if I have binomials like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set those each of those individual binomials equal to zero because of that zero product property. Because we are looking for where that y is equal to zero. So we're looking, if I was to replace every one of these y's with a zero, we're looking for which one of these has the same solutions as the x-intercepts are on this particular function which makes total sense because that's where y equals zero. So, if they're both positive zeros, look at your answer choices here. Positive three and positive one can only come from this one because it's the only one with two minus binomials, two differences. Because if it's a subtraction here, we know it's gonna be a positive root. So that's the only one that's going to possibly give me the pattern that I need. So now we can go in and look at the actual numbers. Well, x minus 3 equaling 0, yep, x would equal 3. And x minus 1 equaling 0, yep, x would equal 1. So those are our two answers, so it's got to be D. And one more with the polynomial division. I know I've gone over this with a lot of kids, but just in case it didn't quite sink in, this is a kind of a, a, a backwards way for us to start learning how to simplify algebraic fractions. So instead of thinking with division symbol here about the quotient, don't worry about the quotient here. We're going to actually write it as a fraction. And really, this is a factoring question. And as we discussed in class, when you are solving a question like this, you are guaranteed that one of the two binomials for the factored form of the numerator is going to match that denominator. So one of the two binomials is already given to you, and the easiest way to do it is just to work backwards. And that would mean saying, all right, what times 3n, what times 3n equals 18n squared? Well, that's 6n. And what that would go here times minus 1 gives you a plus 1? Well, it's got to be a negative 1 to multiply give you a positive 1. Because this numerator is a product of two values, and the same value exists in the denominator, we can cancel them out. So, 6n minus 1 is the only possible answer. The slope of this line. Now, I haven't had a whole lot of classes ask about this one specifically. You need to remember that you solve for y. If you solve for y, you've got your answer. So you've got to get y alone. And in this problem, the easiest way to get y alone does not start with subtracting 1 8 x. The easiest way to get y alone starts with, let's make that fraction go away because I know I'm going to get messed up dealing with that fraction. Well, I know I'm not, but I know most kids are. I prefer fractions because I am strange and mathy. 8 times 3y is 24y, 8 times 3 is 24. So now when I solve for y, I'm not going to have to worry about trying to divide 
this one eighth fraction by that three, because I knew I was gonna have to divide by three, and a lot of us got really confused with that. Now, if you did use your calculator, you probably found easier ways to deal with that problem. So 24y equals negative x plus 24. Divide by 24, divide by 24, divide by 24. So y equals negative 1 24th x plus 1. So I do have to recognize that x over 24 is 1 24th x. So negative 1 24th is my slope for that particular line. This is the last one. And what this goes into is ask for the range of the relation. Now the relation is given to you, it's a graph, and it's a graph with one, two, three, four points on it. And this, uh, real quick, we need to talk about the difference in graphs between a discrete function and a continuous function. Okay, something that is continuous, something that is discrete. Discrete does not mean it can keep a secret, no, no, it means that there are individual separate points. And that's what we have here, is a discrete function. A continuous function would be one in which you might see um, like a curve, okay? Or um, a line would be another example. So that would be a continuous function. A parabola could be considered continuous because it's smooth. It has, um, it doesn't have jumps, it doesn't have gaps, there's no spacing in there. And see, this is discrete. So the difference here is that these two, right here, would be considered, let me do that in a different color, hello, continuous, because you get an inequality. So you have, what this is saying is all, x is all the values from negative 3 to positive 3. And that's not what we have here, because we jump from negative 3 to negative 2. This indicates there's numbers in between. Decimals, fractions, stuff like that. Uh, irrational numbers as well. Okay, and the same thing down here, negative 4 to 4. Now notice it says range. Range. We want to be looking at the y. So we don't, we don't even want to look at x. So a and b would be totally wrong anyway, because that has to do with the x values. Okay. Then we recognize that we're not dealing with something that is continuous. What we're dealing with is something where you've got a separate value for each value in the range. Okay, and this discrete function has range values of negative 4, 0, 2, and 4. All right, so if you've made it all the way to the end of four SOL review videos, I'm really impressed. That's a lot of review video, um, and that's a lot of your time that I'm really glad that you actually devoted to preparing for this test, and I'm confident that as long as you've been working consistently through this whole time and you've been paying attention and trying to do what you've been asked to do, I think you're going to be fine. So my last-minute reminders. First of all, think concept, not algorithm. This is referring to something like when I see this expression, not going mm, add or multiply, add or multiply. Well, I think it's add. No, instead, what does squared mean? It means times itself. Then furthermore, what does x cubed mean? Oh, right. Okay, then I can go back and think, oh, it was multiply that whole time. Okay, when in doubt, write it out. When in doubt, absolutely write it out. Do not skip writing it out. I will have scratch paper for days. So you don't need to stress about where you're going to get more paper. I, I think we can take care of that. Let the calculator be your helper, not your guide. There's nothing wrong with our friends math, enter, enter. Okay, nothing wrong with this. Um, there's nothing wrong with using regression to find the, the equation for a line. Um, for those of you who are like, math, enter, enter, what is she talking about? This is where it chains a decimal to a fraction for you automatically. Where it'll just take any, any rational number you type on your screen and just take it, change it to a, a fraction for you. If you didn't realize, it's math, enter, enter. But in the end, you just do your best because you will regret anything less than that. And if at this point you haven't prepared and you're kind of winging it, just see what you can do. I'm proud of each and every one of you because you, I know you've learned a lot, even if you don't get to show it on the test. All right. I'll see you in class.